First Chronicles chapter 11. Then all Israel gathered themselves to David, this is after the death of Saul, unto Hebron, and said, saying, Behold, we are thy bones and thy flesh. And it would be Judah, Jacob, Isaac, Abraham. Moreover, in times past, even when Saul was king, thou had thou was yeah, that was he that lead us out and brought us in Israel. They say, Saul, King Saul wasn't any kind of leader. You were, David. And led us out and brought us in Israel. And the Lord thy God said unto thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be ruler over my people Israel. Now, we're going to look at a great type of Jesus Christ here. Jesus Christ is the king of the Jews, but he's not reigning right now. David has been anointed. We're going to look at a moment. David's been anointed twice. Going to be anointed twice as we're going to look at it. But there's a time and period in David's life, though he was anointed the king, he wasn't the king. And when we see Jesus Christ, Christ means anointed one. And yet they gave him a crown of thorns. He's not wearing the crown of David yet today. He's not the king of the church. You know, people say, oh, king of the church, and they sing the hymns that God and Jesus Christ are the, our king. They're not. Even a Roman unsaved Pilate had the, had the right idea. He's the king of the Jews. And after David, uh, therefore came all the elders of Israel to the king to Hebron. Now, the reason why in Hebron, because Ishbanish was set up to be the king after uh Saul, Abner set him up. So now we got a period of two kingdoms. And when you look at Jeroboam and Rehoboam, that's not a the first time that nation Israel has been divided into two. It's been divided into two by the house of Saul and the house of David. So in Hebrews where David's made king and David made a covenant with them in Hebrew before the Lord and they anointed David king over Israel according to the word of the Lord by Samuel. Now, this, this anointing, this kingship is the people of Israel, and yet it's not all the people of Israel. And you realize when Jesus Christ comes back, King of kings and Lord of lords, and picks up those Jewish people that we, that we believe would be in Selvitra, that's not all the Jewish people. Man, that's going to be a very fine rendment of all the Jews. Of all the ones that have been beheaded, all the ones that are have been killed by the Antichrist. The rest of all, all the Jews, and I don't know how many, I would say millions maybe throughout the worldwide. God only had 144,000 going to be running around preaching and teaching the Jewish people. And there's two tribes missing, Dan and Ephraim. So let's look at 1 Samuel 16. 13. Let's see the first anointing. 1 Samuel 16, 13. We'll see scripture with scripture stand out. Now Samuel has been told by God, stop crying over King Saul. Grab your stuff. Head over to Jesse. You're going to anoint one of his sons to be king. And he goes through seven of them, or eight. And he's like, wow, look how great these guys are. God says, no, 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 no. I already tried that with King Saul. I don't look on the outward appearance. I look on the heart. You know why David was allowed, well, I shouldn't say allowed. But you know why God forgave David his sin of adultery and murder? It's because of his heart. You know why he didn't forgive King Saul for going to a witch? Because he had rebellion in his heart against God. So when we look at verse 13, Samuel, one man in the midst of his brethren, David's brothers. Now remember John 1 says he came unto his own, his own received them not. Remember Joseph. And they took, and Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him, that's David, in the midst of his brethren. Christ, which means anointed Jesus, lived 33 and a half years amongst his brethren doing signs and wonders. 
Joseph lived amongst his brethren. David lived amongst King Saul and all the brethren. And Saul hated him. The brothers of Joseph hated him. David looks like David's own brothers get angry with him. But he's anointed, but he's not going to be king. Not for a long time. Anoint him in the midst of his friend in the spirit, capital S, of the Lord came upon David from that day forth. And Samuel rose up and went to Rimna. That would be, you know, his home. But there's no kingdom yet. You know what David gets? He gets aggravation. He gets conflict. He gets run away. He gets driven out. He's got this band of rebels who can't pay their bills. How about that? But when David comes up and sit on that throne, man, he brings that tabernacle home. He brings it to Jerusalem. And we're going to start reading what he does. Only thing he doesn't do is he doesn't build that temple. Now, I don't know who builds that temple when in the, in the tribulation period. And I don't even know who renews that temple and restrains it in the millennium. Anointed David king over Israel according to the word of the Lord by Samuel twice. Samuel means ask of the Lord. Ask, Sam, El. That means God. Israel asked of a savior, not of their souls, but will you wipe out Rome for us, please, and give us free bread? John chapter 6. And that's the biggest conflict they had with Jesus. Jesus said, listen, you didn't come to me for the word. You came for the bread. And then they got in that big thing, which is the church doctrine in Rome today, that, you know, you got to eat the body of Jesus and drink his blood. Boy, you went far off on the other thing. He says, I'm the bread of heaven. They didn't want that bread of heaven. They wanted the, man, they wanted the bread where you can take it out, put butter and peanut butter, and toast it. Then, as a family, didn't we read today? And then, man, we're just sick and tired of this man. We're tired of boiled manna. We're tired of baked manna. We're tired of fricasseed manna. We're tired of manna casserole, manna sand. We're tired of that. God said, "Fine, I'll throw you some quails and be coming out your nose." No satisfaction. In verse four, David and all Israel went to Jerusalem, city of peace. That's what that means. Salam, that's peace, which is Jebus, the Jebusites in that land. We'll see that even further. In the land of Canaan, where the Jebusites were, that's where Jerusalem was, where the Jebusites were, okay, and the inhabitants of the land. This is from, the Jebusites are from, from, uh, in Canaan are from the, from the children of Ham, Genesis 10, verse 16. And these are the ones that God said, the Hittites, the Hevites, and the Jebusites, you're to get out of that land. And this land would be the land of Benjamin. A lot of people think it's in Judah, but the classification of the child of the children of Jacob goes to Benjamin. And the heavens of Jebus said to David, Thou shalt, thou shalt, not, what, they know the Ten Commandments? You know, there's more than, than ten, thou shalt. Thou shalt not come hither. You're not coming in here. It almost sounds like Donald Trump today. You're not going to come in here. Nevertheless, <laughs> thou shalt not come hither. Nevertheless, David took the castle. That's the first time castle shows up in the Bible. Of Zion. And in the New Testament, it's S-I-O-N. This is Hebrew. That's Greek. That's Jerusalem. Did you know? I mean, I mean, have you been taught when you say Zion, we're marching to Zion? Do you know where you're marching to? Does your typical Christian who goes to church, does he know where Zion is? The heavenly Zion, S-I-O-N, that's where God is, glory of God. Z-I-O-N is Jerusalem. Which is the city of David? Yeah, I know here. Let's check Revelation nineteen nineteen. I don't know what that see what that note is. I missed that when I was reading. 
No, no today. Revelation 19, 19. Yeah, scripture, scripture. Always room for scripture. 19, 19. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken with him with a false prophet and that wrought miracles before him. And which he deceived them that had to receive the mark of the beast and them that worship his image. These both were cast alive into the lake that burneth with brimstone and the remnant was slain with the sword and Jesus Christ will set himself here. Here he is. And David said, you know what David realized? As he, this is the foundation of Jerusalem right now. And we're going to go over in a moment to 2 Samuel. But here it is. Here is the nation of Israel. Here is their capital. God said, when I put my name among the children of the tribes of the children of Israel, here it is. It is established not by King Saul, but by King David. You see the city of David. You see Zion. You see Jerusalem. It is Jewish. Get rid of the Gentiles. Set it up. Right now, the Gentiles are there. You got the dumb of the rock. There's no temple there. There's no tabernacle there. There's no Jewish king there. I, I, they have a prime minister, I think, or uh, I forget what they call it. do. I can't say his name. I apologize. And this is the land. This is the city that, you know, Okay, we got we got a battle here in in Germany. Okay, oh, we're gonna come back to Jerusalem. Oh wow, big earthquake in China. Then we come back to Jerusalem. Oh, look at the famines and pestilence in the United States. We come back to Jerusalem. Oh, look at a war in South Africa. We come back to Jerusalem. Oh, look at England. There's there, there's bombs and explosions. We come back to Jerusalem. Oh, look at Russia. They're they're, ta they're attacking. And we come back to Jerusalem. The main foundation, the main area of the United Kingdom and the United Nations and all the nighters of the world is Jerusalem because that land is God's land. <coughs> Excuse me. And I hear right now they're trying to make uh, the Palestine a city-state now. They're trying to make it a country. That's against God. So when we look at Jerusalem, we're looking at David. A man after God's heart. When David now is on the throne. You know when Jerusalem's really going to be established? When Jesus Christ sits on that throne. You want to go to the, you know, do you want to go to the holy city? Take the, no, I don't have no idea. I don't care. Don't do it. I don't want to have anything to do with it. I don't want to go where the Arabians are. I don't want to go where the Roman Catholics are. I don't want to go where the heathen are. I don't want to go where the rock stars are go baptize under no salvation at all. I will go to Jerusalem when Jesus Christ sits in, in Jerusalem. And I will be under the direction and the guidance of Jesus Christ who owns that land. That's when I'll be interested in Jerusalem. And verse 6, David said, more so over whosoever, whosoever, isn't that a great verse right there, whosoever, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, David says to all his men, whosoever, whosoever smited the Jebusites, <laughs> you ain't going to talk bad about me, you want to talk, fine, I'll back it up, first shall be chief and captain, Whoever smites those Jebusites, you are in charge of my military. You are the commander-in-chief of the Israeli army. So Joab, the son of Zariah, we know that's uh, David's sister. Joab would be his cousin, something like that. Zariah went up first, went first up, and was chief. Now look at, look at Joab. Look at it. He didn't, we know Joab is... The son of her of his sister. Nephew, I guess. Joab did not get the chief and captain position because of who he knew. He got the position because he earned it. It's not who Joab knew, it's what Joab did. He dedicated himself to fight and he got the victory. So he got the rank. He earned that position. And David dwelt in the castle. Thereof they called it the city of David. Second Samuel five seven. 
2 Samuel 5, 7. We're going to read a part here, and we're going to go back and read it again. But let's look at 2 Samuel 5, 7 first. Then we'll go back to verse 6. But 5, 7. Because this is important. They are they have been doing, and they're finding great archaeological, uh, archaeological evidence of the city of David today. And they will find more. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion. That's the first time that shows up. We just read that. There's the first time, Zion. The same is the city of David. That's the first time it shows up. City of David. That's the first time. Zion and city of David. We're talking about Jerusalem, verse 6. Now, verse 6 to 10 is what we just read in 1 Chronicles 11. And we'll go back and finish that in a moment. Uh, here's a note here. Yago Shiloh. Well, that's an interesting last name, Shiloh. Unearthed the city of David in 1978. 85 discoveries have been found. Wait a minute. 85 discoveries found after he died. Y'all go sorry. And they're still finding. And they got all kinds of websites that you can look up. Look up archaeology, archaeology, the, uh, the study of city of David. And they're finding all kinds of things there. And the king. That's David. Verses 3, 4, 5, what we read in 1 Chronicles 1. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem, unto the Jebusites. And the inhabitants of the land, which spake unto David, saying, Except thou take away the blind. Okay, we didn't get this in 1 Chronicles. Except thou take away the blind and the lame, thou shalt not come in hither. You know, look at your army. You got blind men, you got lame men in it. You got to get rid of those guys that come attack us. You see the pride? That's the pride of America. You're going to come against us. You're going to attack us. Well, you better make sure you got enough missiles. Better make sure you have enough money. Better make sure you have enough Walmarts. Because you can't conquer us. Thou shalt not come in hither. Thinking. <laughs> thinking David cannot come in hither. <laughs> Remember in Chronicles, it was it nevertheless? <laughs> so scripture with scripture means... Thinking would be, nevertheless. <laughs> nevertheless, there it is. <laughs> David took the stronghold of Zion. The same as the city of David. Here, A lot of mouth talk, but David's action. Do you realize when Jesus Christ comes, there's going to be a lot of people going to hate him. But it's not going to care because that flame that's going to come out of his mouth, pfft, get out of my way. You're the goat, get out of my way. You're the sheep, come aboard. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, the same as the city of David, which is Jerusalem, verse 6. And David, I don't want to have, like I said, I want to have any Christians sing hymns about Zion. And David said on that day, this is the day of the battle, whosoever getteth up to the gutter, that's the only time the word used there, gutter, and smite us the Jebusites, and the lame, and the blind. <laughs> Look at David getting at him. If sarcasm is not... I heard someone say sarcasm is a sin. Well, then David sin. <laughs> hey, let's go get him. And go get the lame and the blind too, okay? Go get them. Bring them before my feet. Lame and the blind. That are hated of David's soul. Well, look at that. David's a type of Jesus Christ. There are people that Jesus hates. Name some. All those that reject the finished work that he's done. All them that violated his brethren. The Jewish people. I can imagine Jesus hates Satan. He shall be chief and captain. Wherefore they said... The blind and the lame shall not come up into the house. So David dwelt in the fort. That's the first time fort shows up. Hold the fort for I am coming, Jesus. And called it the city of David. City of David, the fort, the castle, the city of David, Zion, Jerusalem. It's all one place. Jebusai, all one place. And David built round about from Milo and inward. 
And David went on and grew great, and the Lord God of hosts was with him. Back to First Chronicles. Verse 7. And David dwelt in a castle. Thereof they called it the city of David. So that castle is a fort. The fort is a castle. And he built the city round about, even from Millo round about. We just read that. And Joab repaired the rest of the city. David waxed greater and greater. The Lord of hosts was with him. That is the foundation of David set up as the king. And the next thing you see him set up as king is Jerusalem. When Jesus Christ comes back as king of kings and lord of lords and sits up that throne and sits up that Jerusalem, he's going to conquer. And there are going to be people that Jesus Christ is going to have hatred for in his soul. And they will be cast out of his sight. Yeah, our God's a loving God, but our God's a holy God too. So there's a remarkable, important thing in your Bible. Not only do we have the purchase of Jerusalem, but we have the capture of Jerusalem. And later on, David is going to buy the land from Jebusite, one of the Jebusites, to where that temple is going to be. And we'll get to that later on. So he conquers Jerusalem, and he's going to buy the spot where the temple belonged. And your Bible holds the title deed that is being oppressed and improperly sitting of the dumb of the rock. Title deed should tell the United Nations, you guys need to go. That's Israel's land. That's David's land. 